right, hello YouTube. I'm going to be speaking a little loud here, but it's because the microphone on this computer doesn't pick up too well. So at least us hearing it back. Uh, number one, I want to say without giving my exact age away, because uh, I'll be giving the day away, that it's my birthday, and folks, I never thought uh, that I would live this long, nowhere near this long, as a matter of fact. Um, I, my dad died at 47. Uh, a month after me turning 11 years old and his dad died, my grandpa, at 47 uh, when my daddy had just turned 11 years old. And same with his father, uh, my great-grandfather with my grandfather uh, within six months of him turning 11 years old. So we and the four of us the commonality there is is that uh, we were the youngest in the family we were the youngest males in the family and we were either the youngest or the youngest boy in the in the family and Boy, I've well then exceeded that. And I'm thankful, but maybe not for the reasons that you would think I'd be thankful for. I'm thankful for it that uh, I've, I've been able to see my son uh, growing up. And hence Joe and I's bond that's not normal to most of the rest of you. Uh, Joe gets to, has been brought up and raised understanding the importance of father-son relationships. Uh, and he was, he was brought up hearing that uh, because of the uh, sorrow that I, that I had uh, losing my dad at such a young age and that I know that my daddy had uh, with his, with granddaddy dying at such a young age. So, very thankful to the Lord that I've been able to have that time uh, with Joe. Uh, but since my dad died, I've been ready to go home and be with my daddy. See, that's the way it works. Uh, and that's just how, how I feel. Um, and I'm not going to get into all of that, but uh, now that you're going on four minutes into this video, I'm, I'm going to try to give something on this birthday to everyone and it's really to my Christian brethren it, it, it's really it's, it's to my Christian brethren uh, and it's to people that don't believe uh, or believe and yet turn on God because of what they see in, in this world with concerns to Christians and uh, we've, we've got stories in the news, and I'm going to talk a wee little bit about a particular story that has been in the news as of late from a supposed pastor in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and his wife killing herself uh, in Robinson County, North Carolina. Uh, 
Robinson County is close to uh, uh, Myrtle Beach, but it's, it's in North Carolina. It's about an hour, hour and a half north, I believe, of Myrtle Beach. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But uh, we're, we're, we're going to truth tell right now, and we're going to talk about some things that turn a lot of folks off to my king, whom is Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, and the fake and phony Christ that's being peddled in more and more churches every day that's doing nothing except giving false promises, false hope, while worshiping mammon, which is a deity over money and greed and possessions. And that's really what a lot of folks are worshiping today in churches. They're not worshiping the true Jesus Christ. Um, if you can just blanket this statement that I'm fixing to say, and apply it in your life. Trust me, I'm an old man. It will benefit you in all areas of life. Uh, I like orange juice. I like it. I used to drink a lot of orange juice. Orange juice is, is, is good for us. We, we know that. We we scientifically know that. Uh, the good Lord made a good fruit in oranges. And, but I don't drink orange juice um, much anymore, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I used to uh, mix vodka in my orange juice. So, Maybe I'd have a 50-50 split of vodka and orange juice. Maybe I'd have a 40-60 split of vodka and orange juice. But I used to drink a lot of that. And it, it, it's, no good, it's no good for you that way. So I've decided that even though orange juice is good, good for me, uh, I just don't drink it because uh, it gets me to wanting to feel good and it gets me to, or the possibilities there, thank the good Lord, I don't long for alcohol any and have it for years, but uh, it, it may get me to thinking and wanting to feel good and get me to wanting vodka and orange juice so therefore I don't do it so I'm not doing what is what makes me feel good and what under perfect circumstances is very good for me and I'm going to tell all of you folks right now and this is my birthday present to you if you are in church now today uh, in these times you need to consider are, are we in the end times are we approaching end times and then you need to understand do you really believe in the Bible or do you really not uh, the Bible says there would be a great falling away at the end and I truly know uh, it's not a belief I open my eyes up and I look around me and I see uh, what is going on today in these churches and what is happening. And it's a place to go feel good, uh, but it's not orange juice any longer. Uh, it's, it's been mixed with a lot of evil of this world. And there's a lot of hypocrisy. There are a lot of people. Uh, they prophesy in my king's holy name. They talk of love for my king, but they don't know my king. 
they don't know my king's written words. They don't hear my king's spirit. And it's very sad. And in this world today, you need to be very, very careful. Uh, in this world today, if you have a problem, uh, the last resort, uh, let's say it's some kind of security problem or some, something of those nature, that nature, the last resort that you should take is calling the cops. Getting around a cop uh, today in Western society is very dangerous. Uh, the, the, the shouts that you're hearing, uh, the help that they're claiming to give you uh, comes with vodka in it. It's orange juice that has vodka in it. Uh, when you go to church today, it's, you're, you're going to orange with vodka in it. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, it's called discernment. And the Bible demands that we stay in discernment, and we're not doing that any longer. Uh, all sort of immorality, sexual, uh, and otherwise, greed, uh, lying, cheating, stealing, uh, you can find in the world today, uh, unlike when I was a kid, it was a little bit different. You're in a more dangerous world today. And uh, today, uh, it, it's a you, you've got orange juice all over the place. You're being bombarded with how great orange juice is for you. That it it will give you life. It will give you health. It will make you, help you feel better. Uh, help you sleep. Give you energy during the day. Whole bunch of benefits. Uh, however, uh, the discussions are small. The discussions are few in between of the vodka and the orange juice that will kill you dead, that will make you sick, that will take your very soul. We give uh, so much attention in, these, in this time to uh, good health, uh, don't smoke, don't drink, uh, eat things that have good vitamins and good minerals in them, eat clean food, uh, drink clean things. Yet we don't talk about the uncleanliness and the unclean things. The unclean things are now being told to you that they're clean and it's just simply not true and society's eroding for it. So I just want to tell you uh, and give to you on my birthday, anyone that would take the patience to sit and listen to this old man, that you need to be careful in this world today. Uh, everything's not funny, ha ha. Uh, everything's not pleasant. Uh, if you're a young kid growing up today, you need to realize it. No matter how how rich mom or dad is, uh, no matter the station in life that the folks that take care of you are in, uh, you are always one step away from those streets. Be wise in your decision making. The most important thing is to be wise in who you get spiritual advice from. Be wise with who you worship around. I'm not telling anyone not to go to church. But what I am saying is
is this. Uh, you could relate your church where you go to the United States Congress. No one, uh, there's four idiots out of a hundred. That's four percent that believe that the United States Congress is doing a good job. So you've got 96% that are saying Congress is no good, it's doing an awful job. Yet you ask each one of those people in their districts, and you've probably got an 80% favorability rate from them to their congressmen. So, oh, Congress is terrible, but not my congressman. And that, that's a lot of you in church today. You've got to be careful. These people will lead you astray. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the video description or somewhere, pinned comment, and or both. And I want you to look at what's been going on uh, I believe it's, it was called Rock Solid Church in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And all this has been going on there for years. Yet, that church was voted several years in a row as the best place of worship in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So, you just got to be careful, folks. Satan is on the prowl. You, uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you're in a different world today, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about the world that I grew up in. And the world I grew up in, more often than not, the preacher wasn't as well off as your mom or your dad or, or yourself. These preachers were hardworking people. They typically, where I come from, worked uh, textile mill jobs, uh, drove taxis, uh, drove trucks, uh, were mechanics, uh, were construction workers, and somehow or another, they would work 40 50 hour, or 50 hours a week, 40 or 50 hours a week, and they would tend their flock. And they weren't as well off, generally, as the flock was. They were genuinely in service to the king of kings, my king. Today, they're in service to a fake false king, and they keep telling you that it's my king, and it's not. It's not the real Christ. It's a false Christ. And they typically are way better off than the flock they claim to serve. And as a matter of fact, they, a lot of them come are right open with it uh, in their services and make it that you're there to serve them that God somehow has put something special on them and it's your responsibility to give to them. And uh, a pastor's responsibility is far wide and it's great. And these guys, they can't even work three months and they have to go off for sabbaticals. And for those of you that aren't familiar with sabbaticals, it's just a fancy way of saying uh, vacation uh, for a privileged person and these people aren't privileged they uh, many of them today don't even have the decency to put a suit and tie on to get in front of their congregation to represent the king of all kings they don't even have the respect enough to do that they will go and rip their pants up and get up there and then go off to their half million or million dollar homes. They get in the fancy cars while your mother and father uh, or your children or, or your aunts or uncles are getting in beat up jalopies and they're telling you you need to get, give them money when they get into their 
Lincolns and Cadillacs and whatnot and their fancy trucks. And this ain't what God intended, folks. They, they tell the hard workers, the guys that are working 50, sometimes 60 hours a week, they want them to come mow the churchyard. When I was a kid, as a Baptist back then, I no longer consider myself a, a, a part of them. I just consider myself with the body of Christ. But those, those pastors would work like dogs, upkeep the church, paint the church. It was nothing you drive by going on the way to the store. Oh, well, the pastor's up there two stories in the air on, a, on scaffolding painting the church. You wouldn't even find one today uh, that would go out there. They're too, so lazy. They'd have another man have to volunteer his time to go check to see to make sure if the work is being done correctly. And then it's all a big pressure to them. It's so much responsibility. So they have to go on four or five vacations a year. Their vacations while yours is one week. Uh, maybe they're taking a month or two a year off. And the reality of that and you condoning that promotes what is down here in this description box and I hope that all of you go and see what happened at that uh, church in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina uh, with his wife killing herself in North Carolina. Uh, it's just truly sickening and sad and when we pile up and fill good churches orange juice mixed with vodka and we are drunken we are drunken in lies and filth and feel good the other people out here that would come to the Lord they don't come and it's our responsibility to call out these people to expose it. If you are in church today and you see something wrong, you should stand and say it. My mother did. Uh, in 1974, we were in a Baptist church. It was our home church. My mother stood up and exposed an affair that the preacher was having with the organist. She didn't sit and confer with other folks and say, well, I, you know, I got to tiptoe this. I have to do this. We went to church one Sunday morning, and when the preacher said, has anybody got any request or uh, it was something for grocery donations, something we used to do right regular, there would be a separate fund set up. Everybody would be uh, the collection plate. The collection plate would go twice. Uh, one of the collections would go to people that if they couldn't pay their electric bill or uh, uh, rent or house payment and somebody was in need, there was a big fund for that. We took care of each other. We don't do that today. Collectively, we do not do that today. And that is not godly to not do that. It's ungodly to not do that. And uh, she stood up and she exposed that. She exposed that. And many people didn't want to believe it. And we left. And it, it took about a year and a half, but it was really, really exposed in a major way. And with the embezzlement of money within a year and a half later, uh, people went to prison over that. So the, these types of problems have existed here and there, but they're prevalent all over the place in the Christian church today. And it's up to us to expose. It's just as simple as that. If uh, 
You know, I've told you guys that watch us regular time and time again. Uh, if, if you allow something to happen to yourself and you do not stand and you do not see to it that it does not happen again, or at least try your damnedest, therefore, for not to happen again, you, and you just lay down and let it roll, you are responsible for everybody that it happens to after you. That's on you. It's your fault. Uh, when we get in that judgment line, there's going to be, there's not going to be a no accountability line. You know, we're not going to be able to shout and say, well, I'm not accountable for that. That didn't happen on account of me. We are all responsible when we see these ugly bad things and we continue to allow it. That's what's wrong with the church today. That's what's wrong with government today. That's what's wrong with policing today. Uh, that's what's wrong with rampant drug use, uh, alcoholism, uh, theft, everything, is that we are allowing it to happen. No more, no less. And we all collectively take a little responsibility and portion of that. Now, am I saying we can't get forgiven for any of these things? No, I'm not saying that. We can be forgiven. But we bear a big responsibility individually for what goes on around us. And we have to expose corruption. And I want to tell, this is really to my Christian brothers and sisters. If you think for one second, turning a blind eye when it comes to the very souls of other folks is okay, you're lost. You don't have my Christ. You've got a form of a Christ, but it's a false Christ. So grow up, put a damn pair of pants on everybody, you young people, Learn that you're going to get out of diapers before it's over with, and eventually you'll have to put some pants on and stay away from the evilness as best you can. Uh, I want to tell all my Christian brothers and sisters, God bless you. And to everyone that doesn't believe in God, they've been turned off. Uh, they, they, they really have it in their heart. I, I, don't want, I don't love a God that would allow these things to happen. Uh, I, I want to tell you, there's a lot of us out here, and God doesn't want to allow these things to happen. It is us doing these things. The good Lord never designed us to uh, have a miserable world. But I'll tell you something else, too. Be very careful with the orange juice that you drink. And I'll leave it at that.